Harding Park. Here's the 18th. What a beautiful day for this challenge. Break 80, 79 or better, or else $500 to somebody in the Imagine Golf app who's left a comment. <coughs> Teeing it up in about an hour. I'm here to get prepared, get my mind right, get loose, and just be grateful for the opportunity to play this great game. Thanks, everybody. I'll give you an update soon. Hey, it's Malcolm here. Quick side note, make sure you go over to YouTube and watch this podcast. Just search Imagine Golf and you'll find this show and you'll be able to see the hole by hole replays and actual shots of me hitting the golf ball. You can also just listen on the audio if you want. All right, on with the show. All right, so let's just recap. Like, I think instead of doing like the high low up front, and the homework review, we like we say like we're not going to bury the lead. We're just going to get right into this, you know. Yeah, well, let's let's get into the round and talk about what the punishment was. Let's just jump in. All right, let's just jump in. Okay, all right. So maybe you've got a lot of experience doing these things. So like, welcome back to Pod Five, Episode Five, everybody. The Imagine What's Possible Show. I'm trying to break par for the first time in my life. I'm a four handicap. Um, it took me 20 years to get from a 20 down to a four. And um, Brian Mog, my coach, my muse, you know, my man um, is helping me, helping me unlock um, this next big milestone. So, remind people, Brian, what was the challenge this week? The challenge this week, I told Malcolm because at the end of this series, he's going to play around trying to break the par. So we need to simulate some sort of tournament nerves. And so he went and played TPC Harding Park. His goal was to break 80. Okay. Very difficult course. I think he played it in wins. So he figured break 80 was a good number, a good challenging number to try to shoot. And if he didn't break 80, he had a punishment on the line. And his punishment was that I get to pick out his outfit for his next round of golf with random people or friends, whoever. Um, and my goal is... If he didn't do it, to embarrass him. So that's where we're at. And, I, and we and one person was going to get five hundred dollars randomly picked. So like there was yes. pressure going into this round. One one Imagine Golf listener. So we picked somebody in the Imagine Golf app mm -hmm. who's left a comment um, uh, on one of the recent um, uh, three minute you know snackable uh, audio lessons that we have in the Imagine Golf app. And um, that so it was like you know I'm driving into Harding Park and it's like a, I got five hundred dollar I kind of fee for not um shooting 79 or better and i'm you know you're gonna dress me up in some wild outfit so it this is like this is a classic sports psychology thing like let's create performance anxiety you know before mm -hmm. you know you used to do this when you're qualifying for q school and you, you got you had to get your ears pierced right because you ears pierced uh, head shaved multiple things um, done all. all right so we're going to treat this episode a little bit differently instead of like doing the high low and the homework review and all that we're just going to go right into a round mm -hmm. review so we talk a lot about it. Imagine golf. Like you, you, you take a few minutes after the round and you walk through hole by hole. You do it by yourself. You can do it with your coach. And uh, just like basketball players, like watching tape or football players watching tape. Um, so Harding Park, and you never played it, huh? Never played it. Only, only watched it. So 2020 um, PGA Championship was there. That's where Colin Morikawa won it. Um, we played the Blues. I was playing an event with some. You know, my best buddies out here in um, in California, and it was 12 guys. Um, uh, I was playing in a group with the head pro um, at a local club here, Matt Haskamp, who's a phenomenal golfer and great guy. So, like, this wasn't like, you know, a hit and giggle where, like, my score wasn't like, you know, my putts weren't going to be, you know, true. And I have to, like, I had actually, this is a true, you know, real round of golf here. Um, 6,845 yards, beautiful day. But as you know, the Bay area, you know, the wind likes to blow. So it was, it wasn't an easy, you know, day to mm -hmm. go out there and do it. So, but let me, I filmed some content on the day. So I'm going to, um, uh, we'll walk through what happened on each hole and I'll play, I'll play some of the content and then we can maybe talk it through. And, um, uh, how's that sound? Is that good? Perfect. Perfect. Let's get driving in. Parting park. First hole. Um, you know, it just, it, it's not that challenging a hole. Um, you know, but 
I did not commit to the pause. And um, so I actually pulled my, you know, literally, I just spent like 45 minutes at the range working on it. But on the tee, I found it difficult to, you know, have that grace and execution to hold it there for a good one or two seconds and then let it go. So um, it wasn't the best drive, but um, I was fine. Um, and then I I had um, like a, an A wedge in and I hit the A wedge um, from there, just like to the back right of the green and the pen was front left. So I had like a 60 mm-hmm. foot putt and I left it um, like maybe six feet right and then missed the putt. So I started out with a bogey. Yeah. Um, all right, let's keep flying here. Yeah. Let's keep get a little. All right. Oh, that's my next hole. shot there. So where am I at here? Third hole. Third hole. I missed. I skipped one. I get a little quick. And I just did. Just me talking about my um my first uh, drive. Didn't commit to the pause on that one swing. and got myself in a really tough place. So um, didn't scramble very well, but it was really tough. So, but then I recommitted the pause, hit a perfect drive, and it's like six hundred. This is a different. This is the wrong. That's the wrong clip, actually. Um, so, okay, let me just. This, this is we actually. I think all the clips right. That one is not right. But the um, uh, second hole um, after that bogey, I was like, all right, you know, kind of, you know, rough way to start. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but I remember that a lot of the best rounds that ever have started with a bogey. You know, oh, yeah. a lot of golf tournaments and one with a bogey. I don't See, know, what, what are your thoughts on like starting with a bogey? How do you handle that? No, I, I think it's important to do what you did. Like you flipped it instead of going, oh boy, here we go. We're one over par through one on pace to shoot 90. You flipped it and you're like, there's been so many great golf rounds that have been played where they've made a bogey on the first hole. Um, and sometimes making a bogey, it can kind of settle you in. You can be a little bit nervous. You make a bogey and you're like, all right, come on, let's go. So I think it's just the attitude that you have towards it. You have to always be thinking, nope, my best is ahead of me. I'm going to turn this around. And that's exactly what you did. So I think the way you handled it was absolutely perfect. Yep. Love it. All right. Second hole, recommitted the pause and hit a beautiful drive down the left side. It found the bunker. <clears throat> um, and I've got a seven iron, well, 176 yards in and you know, from a fairway bunker. So I'm like, you know, mm-hmm. there's definitely a kind of thought that says, all right, well, this isn't looking too good either. <laughs> um, but I was I was actually pretty happy because I committed the pause and I hit a good drive. It says like 259, but I think that it was felt like a further drive than that. I hit it well. Anyways, hit the best fairway would a f- uh, fairway um, bunker shot I've ever hit. I mean, I just it was like I, I, I held the pause. I hit a seven iron, you know, 170. It was 20 feet left of the pin. You know, phenomenal shot. Oh, I love it. Blushed uh, it. Okay, that was that was like you know, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's my next shot there. No, um, get a little. No, oh, this is okay. That was the right one. All right, All right so here we go. Um, get a little. So hold three. Now par three uphill, 185 yards. Mm-hmm. Um, I just came off of a great hole. I'm one over now, and um, uh, here we go. Didn't commit to the pause. So um, mm-hmm. I'm thinking like I just I think this is a little bit of an intimidating shot. You know, I've got um, it's uphill. And it's a long par three and I got short my backswing and I pulled it. So here's, here's, um, here's what that hole looked like. That's my next shot there. That's me looking at it. I see the wind blowing right to left. I'm kind of like, mm-hmm. my next shot. What club did you hit? I hit Four? a seven iron, I think. Maybe I had a seven iron. I was hitting, I've, since oh. I've been working with you, I'm hitting everything. It was like down in there. Super far. But it was gotcha. like, kind of like when we played in Scottsdale, it's something like the air felt thin. Like mm-hmm. things were just flying. Like it's like mm-hmm. it was just it wasn't like a heavy wet air. It was a drier air. So um yeah, the balls were flying. But you can just hear my like going into this, I wasn't my alter ego of like Michael Jordan. You know, we talked about Kobe mm-hmm. Bryant last week. I wasn't it wasn't like this is my next shot. Watch this. It was like, oh, this is my next shot. Really long uphill. Yeah. <laughs> <really low. Yeah. laughs> right, I think that's easy to do. <laughs> yeah. So you can actually see here, this is what happened. I pulled it left. Um, and uh, it's kind of like what you and I did when we played in Scottsdale, that par three. Remember I hit one, like a launch one yep. left. Oh, uh, yep. Very similar swing. I kind of crushed it, but. All right. This is where it landed. Had a, oh boy. Sticky sitch there where I didn't do the pause and I short, quick back swing and I pulled it and I'm kind of over here on the par three. So I got to look at that lie. Get out of some trouble. That's nasty. Dirt. 
I got to hit it under a tree and there's like three inches of rough before the, before the hole you can see here. It's like, this is a tough shot, you know? Yeah. So I ended up like, you know, hitting like a little seven iron, like knocked down and like it caught the rough and just died. And then, mm -hmm. um, so I'm lying two. then I hit a, you know, kind of, you know, get a sand wedge on it and it lands like two feet on the green, miss the pot. So I'm like a double bogey. So just now you're, three, so now you're three over through three. I'm three over through three. On a hard golf course. Okay. Yeah. I get a little quick and I just didn't just commit to down the next fairway. Um, uh, talking about that hole. The pause on that one swing. I got myself in a really tough place. So um, didn't scramble very well, but it was really tough. So, but then I recommitted the pause, hit a perfect drive, done it's like 600 yard par five, number four. Hit a, just hit a beautiful five wood uh, hybrid. And uh, hit a great drive, then hit a great five wood. And this is a long, long hole, pretty tight. Um, in great shape. So um, recovered and uh, just recommitting. Pause, man of the people. All right, thanks for rooting for me. Let's see what we got. Three over after three. Break 80. I love it. Last week, like one of the things you want to be able to do is to be like the bounce back. Like your alter ego, the kind mm -hmm. of McGregor of golf. You're like, mm -hmm. I, I bounce back better than anybody else on the tour. And I was thinking mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll save it for the end. I'll save it for no, the it's end. That's great. No, let's share it now. Well, I was going to say so when I played my second year of playing Latin Tour Q school, I got conditional status and the final round I needed to shoot like probably 69 to get through and I started off bogey double bogey and everything in me was like that's it you're done you're not going to shoot 69 started off bogey double bogey I'm walking to the next tee and I'm like I remembered I caddied for Chang Su Pan way back in the day and Pan used to write on his golf ball now here and I asked him why, why you why do you write now here? He goes, because now I get up to my ball and now we're here. This is the shot we have. The past is in the past, and you just got to keep going, and you got to just recommit, like you said. I recommitted to the pause, and boom, back on track. And and I think that's that's what you got to do. You can't just sit there and be like, I'm three over through three. This is terrible. I'm a mess. I got no chance. That's Bounce awesome. back, baby. That is awesome. And I I ended up shooting three under that round. By the way. Damn. So good. <laughs> the scorecard's kind of wild. That is so good. Well, the the thing is, I I was so pumped when I hit a good drive, and then I hit a great five, you know, five hybrid. I was like, all right, you know, like I've got the shots in me. I just need to, you know, commit to that pause, and everything's good. All right, mm -hmm. here we go. This hole is so long. I mean, this is five, it's five hundred eighty-eight yards, and it was it was wind. Uh, I, you know, so my I hit a five when I was I think I had hundred yards in from there. Yeah. All right. Had to write down a five there. Five on the par three. So I'm three over through three. Just great example of what happens when you get. Okay. That's just talking more there. All right. All right. Next half the par there. Just hit a great A wedge on 110 yards. And pulled it, but it was still on the green. <clears throat> Another really long putt. But... This is me from 100 yards out. I hit an A wedge and I didn't hit it great, but I had a, like a good good solid two putt one thing i had a lot of putts at harding that were like 50 to 60 feet so um yeah when, that's tough when you and i play together you're like malcolm you, you can't really afford to have a lot of bogeys and double bogeys because you don't make a lot of birdies <laughs> that. Yeah. so i like you know next step dialing in my like you know 100 125 yarders yep that's a great way thanks for building my confidence up there yep i got you had a couple of really long putts but uh Good two putt, five, so three over, four, and I'm gonna stop thinking as much about the score now. And I'm um, gonna you know, just do something here. Thinking about Brian and Daniel, I'm taking my glove off. Thinking about and, you uh, and Daniel. Just kind of enjoy the walk. Love it. Had a good drive here. Didn't pause fully, so it was, it was a great, wasn't, you know, it was a kind of a, give it a, you know, B minus drive, but I'm, I'm in good shape. Um, so really, Get into the headspace where I can be a pause man of the people. And that's my only thought. That was what we talked about on the podcast. Enjoy the day. Love is off. Just sunshine. So, you know, probably wouldn't have drew, uh, drew it up to be three over after five, but I think we're in good shape. 
think we're in good shape. Birdie's coming. Yeah. And I feel like I'm settling in. So a little bit of extra pressure knowing a lot of people are uh, going to be following along for what's going to happen. So anyways, keep you updated. It really is extra pressure. pressure. Daniel asked me, he's like, you know, Daniel's a producer for the show. And uh, he's like, so were you like really nervous for this? And, you know, like I partially, I was like the $500 and like the bet about like having to wear something weird. But like a big thing too, is there's a lot of people are going to like know what I shot and like, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's, I have, we, I have, we're an audio, you know, business. So we haven't done a lot of stuff on camera. So that was the other thing. It's like, you know, we're moving into this new, you know, you know, putting stuff on YouTube and stuff. So, um, but <clears throat> over the last couple of years, like, you know, several people I play golf with know I run a magic golf and they're not like, you know, I, I kind of have had a couple of years of like people knowing people are thinking, Oh, I wonder what this guy's going to do. Like he kind of spends his life in golf. Yeah. Um, at the beginning, I was really nervous about that. You know, and I would, it would, it would, I'd be like chunking shots and be extra embarrassed. I'm like, I freaking started Imagine Golf and like, you know, we're helping people get better and here I am chunking or whatever. But I, I got comfortable with that just through doing reps, right? Just through playing more golf and, um, with, you know, and just like, look, I mean, now I can, I play in tournaments and, you know, a lot of people, you know, they listen to the Imagine Golf app or whatever, but they're like, I just, I guess that's worn off. And I, I just think it's because mm -hmm. I've done reps. You, you have to just go out and play and be judged and again yeah. you know in life we are judged you know and um um that's a great thing about golf you got to be willing to go out there and, and get on stage oh i agree i think everybody wrestles with that same thing they're afraid to go out and embarrass yourself like you if you went out and you played horrible and shot a million like that looks that's embarrassing you know, it's not good and, for my company. It's not good for yeah. like, you know, what am I, you know, what, all sorts of things. Right. And, but it's like, this is what the golf pros do. And sometimes they do go out and shoot a million and it's yeah. like, you know, um, but you, you, we, we gave, we, we had a covered Ben Hogan's five lessons in the app last week. And he had a great phrase called the crucible of competition. And he really encourages amateurs to play in competitions because it's, it, it's, you know, you are not in your comfort zone, but like it is, it is pushing you, you know, to perform under pressure and, you know, the best basketball teams like Michael Jordan, you know, I'm really working on you know, him as my alter, you know, a lot of his traits is I'm building my own alter ego and, you know, his competitor is like his uh, teammates said he practiced so hard. Like when it came game time, it was like, you know, no big deal. No, this is practice, right? And it's like practice, like, you know, with he's trying to simulate the game time in practice. And um, I just, it's, I know a lot of people get nervous about people watching them. And I just, yeah. my only message to them is like, just go out there, you know, feel the fear and do it anyway. You know, yeah. And, be courageous, be courageous, just, seek, seek failure and just run right to it and not be afraid to fail. I think that's the best, the best way to do it. You know, go embarrass yourself, you know, and yeah. it's like the metaphor of somebody said, it's, you know, starting a company or, you know, trying to like perform as a musician or it's like walking a tightrope. Um, and it, it is, you know, it is a little bit, you know, you know, it, 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 you, you feel like you're off balance and you're scared you're going to fall and you will fall. You're going to fall off the tightrope guaranteed, but the tightrope's only like an inch off the ground. And that's what yeah. you don't know until you fall. It's like, oh, great, you know, whatever. I, I, I bombed, you know, but it's, it's just, I didn't get hurt, you know? Yeah. I fell off, but it's fine. You know? So exactly. anyways, all right, let's keep moving. All right. So I, 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 I took the glove off and I was like, I forgot. I, I didn't film for a couple holes. Um, mm -hmm. So, Good. um, and, uh, but I had, um, I had three great holes here. So I'll just, I'll, I'm going to fly through these, but i um, just showing you where I hit my tee shot here. Um, the next video catches up a little bit on the past few holes. Um, uh, but the, I finished the front nine strong. This was, uh, this was one of my best shots, 229 yard par three. I mean, Ooh, back, that's a I, hit a, um, I hit a five iron, um, like pin high. I mean, I just was like, it had a really nice, nice shot. Um, yeah. and, um, uh, that, that is a hole that easily could have gotten away from me. Um, this hit it, hit it, it just, again. 
committed to that. And oh, this is Matt Haskamp, PGA Pro. Just wanted to show one of his swings. I was playing with him. This is on number nine, par five. Oh, that's Pierre. Perfect. Yep, really good, smooth tempo. Um, it's a little short. It's a good shot, though. All right, so my drive hit a <clears throat> massive drive down the left side. Really, really good. And then actually, again, I kind of got a one thing about working with you now is like things are going a lot further. So I hit my five hybrid and I this you could see up on the top left um, next to the green to the left is a bunker. And I got really lucky it caught that bunker. It actually mm. just just came out of the bunker. But if it wouldn't have caught that, like it would have been out of in trouble. Um, yeah, you could see the the wind here in the video of Matt is kind of like right to left. <laughs> So like so I kind of hooked it with the wind and it yeah. it's a little short. Exactly. It's a good shot though. But if I would have if that would have gone at the green, <clears> it would have gone like thirty <throat> yards through. So I gotta, you know, this is a great example of a golf course where you are always okay to be short. Like you are much better to land hit a I, I could hit a five iron here and it probably would have rolled onto the green. Um, so it's there's a lot of courses I think like in Scottsdale and here where you're okay. Land it short and let it roll up. You know, my uncle, um, my uncle oftentimes, you know, reminds me of that. You know, it's okay to be short. Usually, on most golf, most golf course architecture is like that's the miss. I don't know if you agree mm -hmm. with that, but no, I agree. That's fine. Um, all right, <clears throat> all right. Took a little break from recording, but I'm on the tenth hole, five over. So I finished five over on the front. Finished with four pars, um, double, three bogeys, um, the rest pars. So missed a perfect opportunity on number nine, but here we go. Good drive. Uh, Going to take a good back nine, um, but uh, we can do this. All right. All right. So, man, it's windy. It is so windy. Oh, it was windy. Here at Whippin. Five over after nine. Yeah. So now we're at the turn. Hit a pretty good drive on 10, um, par five. Second shot, hit a good second shot. And then I was like cursing you. I'll, I'll, I'll play this in a second here. Oh, it's actually, um, uh, oh yeah, okay, let me play this here. So that, so let me just go back for a second. So I, um, I, hit, a, um, I hit a good drive and I, had, I just took my medicine. I, I didn't really take medicine. I couldn't go for it, you know, from the left side here. Mm -hmm. So I hit a six iron to the right side. I was 100 and, I think it was 130 yards. Um, and I was like, oh, 130 yards in this uphill. And I was like, oh, well, I mean, into the wind, uphill. Like, I've usually hit a wedge like that, but, you know, with the, it's easily a nine iron from my old swing. But I hit the nine, I hit the 20 yards past the green. They, oh, that's the wind, not right? good. And I had, a, it. <laughs> I had a downhill, you know, weird chip, like from back here behind the green. And it caught, perfectly caught like the, 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 the skirting of the green and like kicked forward. Yeah. And and I left it like to five feet, and then I made the putt. So I saved nice. more, but that could have nice. easily been a bogey. That is so that was a that is save. big. That, yeah, that's a big but save. The round going. Now that I know my distance is more, like I would have in hindsight, I would have hit wedge there, right? This mm -hmm. is the other thing is like I'm doing this challenge on a course I don't normally play, right? This is a this is a that's another big factor here. If I was um, makes a big makes a big difference in how hard the challenge is. All right, here we go. All right, this is one of the. Kind of, I just wanted to show, like, this is another par three, 190 yards, wind blowing. I mean, this is yeah, this is like the third par three that's 180 plus yards. I'm just giving a sense for it. Looking back here, I'm just walking, playing the blues. And it's a long, long ways today. So, like, several, like, the par fives are not even close to reachable in two here at Harding Park. The, uh, it doesn't look like it right here, but the wind is up. So, I mean... This is definitely a, a big challenge. So, but managed to par the first hole in the back nine, um, big par five. And um, one of the things that's happening is. Oh, here's where I start to curse you. Uh, Bryant's got me straight in my grip. So, a lot of my clubs are flying much further than usual. This is still coming in some square, not swiping across the ball, hitting these kind of spinny cuts. So, um, I had a really, you know, nice 120 yard shot, which usually was a basic wedge for me and, uh, was into the wind. So I was like, ah, oh, maybe I'll take an extra one. It's kind of like uphill at 135, maybe hit nine and like 20 yards over the green. And I managed to say par. So 
Anyways, that's like something with a new grip and coming in square. Just gotta dial in my distances again, but anyways, here we go. The journey continues. Five over after 10. Five over after 10. I'm excited for everybody who's listening. Once they, you know, most of us are amateurs and they kind of have this like, you know, spinny cut. I mean, I didn't know what that meant for many years, but it means you're swiping, you're coming over the top and swiping across the ball. And it just kills your distance and, and it and it exaggerates this, you know, in the wind, like your slice goes like twice as far. So um, we're going to be putting out some content on helping people, you know, come in more square and, you know, basically square up the club face, which is, you know, mm-hmm. has helped me do massively. Um, yeah. Now, now you playing in the, the wind doesn't affect your golf balls. Oh much. my God. It's crazy. It does, but not as much as before. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I also I played with a buddy of mine, Gardner, who's like been much longer than me over the last couple of years. And like I'm driving it past him. Sorry, Gardner. Oh, I love it. Um, and I'm like, you know, he's like, he'd be the guy shooting hitting a five iron on like a 220 yard hole. And I'd be like, how do you do that? Now, <laughs> like, like, I'm like a little three wood in there. <laughs> maybe I should hit six. <laughs> All right. I love it. <laughs> Bryant's got me. All right, here we go. I want to show my buddy Tim here. Um, this is a past that hole looks holes. awesome. So, um, my partner in the season long event, the Georgia Wood. Look at that. There he is, folks. That's mm. dialed. Yeah. All right. I got one of my, my swings here, too. All right. Let's see if it's longer. I felt, I thought this pause was like, like three seconds. This is, you know, yeah. Oh yeah. Isn't it funny? You feel like a three second pause and it's almost not even a pause. Crazy. I mean uh, in your backswing is it's that's twice the length of last time when we played. Twice the length. Yeah. And that was that was a perfect drive. I mean, the one <laughs> thing I noticed, like, you know. You know, the next few rounds, I'm going to get a videographer out to film the whole thing, um, so we can get better shots like down the line. But um, like, how, is how bent over I am. Like, you know, like I'm like I didn't know I hunched over, but that's you know. Anyways, I know you're not Malcolm. Don't think about that. We're not working on that. No, that's yet. fine. Don't worry about that. All right. All right. Interesting momentum here. So, first hole of back nine, solid par. Second hole just missed, like 190 yard into the wind, par three, just missed the green to the right, and then got the chip just, you know, the rough here is pretty, pretty tough stuff. So kind of just got a little bit too much grass and then I'll have to maybe that par three, that long par three, I missed it just right of the green and I is kind of really like burden ass lie. And I just, I didn't get enough of the ball and um, left it like 12 feet short, missed the pot. So I was a bogey. Yeah. Maybe 10 feet yeah. short and missed the pot. So bogey there, then bounce back with a birdie. <laughs> Par five, short par five, great drive. Took a two iron, took my, you know, just nice and easy. And then a nice short par four, um, number, now we're on number 13, and um, uh, hit a brilliant drive. I filmed it and um, big, big pause, felt like a huge pause. Watch the video, it wasn't that big of a pause. And um, hit it just right in the middle of fairway, and then hit a beautiful nine iron, about 150 yards, and really hit my club so much further now with this. A stronger grip and better takeaway. So I've got about a maybe a 10, 10 footer birdie five over. I don't know where that hole is here, but I think it's a 12. Oh, yeah, here's 12. Bryant's got me. This is this is 12. So th- this was a really good club selection. So mm-hmm. this is a dog leg left. I have a typically hit a fade and I took my two iron here and um, mm-hmm. I hit two iron and it rolled out. Like I had a really good two iron. That guy. You know, the other guys were like, you know, spraying it. I mean, that had some good drives, but like Tim lost his ball. He was well on way on the other side of the fairway. It's just like this was this was like the more mature Malcolm. So two iron off the tee. And then I still was like in range. I think I had 240 or something. It was a little bit downwind. And I, I actually hit a five iron. I was like, I didn't get a five iron there. Like if it gets it's yeah. short, it's gonna roll. I didn't hit it great, but then I hit an amazing chip um to tap in range from like, you know, it was probably like a you know, 75 foot, you know, chip. Um, and, uh, just, you know, really it's been a good part of my game. So I just want to show you that hole. All right. All right. Interesting momentum here. 
Uh, here, here we are. Um, this is that putt, actually. That so I just talked about the nine iron to ten feet. For, yeah. This is for birdie. Just missed it on the amateur mm. side. Missed it low. Yep. And then, like, you know, these little things here, like, these used to scare me, these putts. You know, yeah. now I'm just, like, kind of, like, you know, I'm confident over them now. And, you know, I did um, – um, I, I do need to take those seriously. But, like, you know, I, that's just something that – I'll come to that in a minute, actually. Um, all right. So it's Tim. Just look at the beautiful day. It's just amazing, actually. Oh, beautiful. Oh, Tim. Low side. Right. Yeah, I think the the short putts. The key is what a beautiful game. The key to the key to the short putts is you just gotta focus up, and then don't be afraid to miss it. If you miss it, you miss it. That's the only reason people miss short ones. They're afraid to miss it. What what's gonna happen? Oh, you add a stroke Man. to your score. You go to the next. You know, just at it. Just that's that's yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Be, be Here's everybody misses short putts. You know, it can happen. Focus up, hit it. Yep. Um, uh, the other thing is like, you know, if you got 10 feet or, you know, 12 feet down the hill, I think I said this to you last pod. I'm like, I don't need to make those putts. Like I need yeah. to not three putt. So that is key for me is like for me to break par, you know, in the next three weeks, it's not going to be me needing to drain 35 footers. It's going to be all right, two putt, two putt. So it's actually the, the more I work on my lag putting, which is, which is strong, the less like five, six footers I have to make. Yep. Yep. Um, it takes stress off your round too. You don't have 95, six footers all day long. Yep. All right. We're coming into the, like, you know, the, the final uh, stretch here. So, um, this has been a tough hole for me. Are you four over right now? Four um, over through 13 or five? I'm uh, no, cause I bogeyed the par three to get six over. And then I, and then, um, and then you I birdied. Uh, birdied and then I birdied. So I'm five over still. Okay, five over. Five over. So actually even on the back. <clears throat> Solid. Um, so 10, 11, 12, 13. After four holes, I had two pars, a bogey, and a, and a, and a, and a birdie. Uh, this has been a tough hole. And um, this hole is like you cannot be left. Like there is a gully on there. You can just see it over Tim's right shoulder. Um, and um, historically, I've like bailed out right. Anyways, I really focused on the pause here. It had a great drive up the left-hand side. But I just... Took a moment to just enjoy the day here. I'll just play this. Put a cloud in the sky. Out here in Mother Nature. Competition, camaraderie. Appreciate you following along on this day. Let's see. Mm. Cal, not Cal, Olympic Club over there. Gorgeous. Oh, that's Olympic. I didn't realize there was lake. some water. But, uh, what a beautiful stretch of land. Some vision to make all these golf courses. All right, so quick update. Um, got the par there, missed the birdie putt by an inch, and um, hit a pretty good drive here. Two of my guys hit a really bad kind of left. Pulls. Uh, this is a hole you can get in a lot of trouble. It's a number, number six stroke hole. So it's good to be in, in decent shape. So just keep, keep the pause going, steady as she goes. Glove off now. Enjoying the walk. I really paused on this one and I hit like a big drive and it was like a you know it's just to the left side here mm -hmm. and um you know still at 180 yards. So this is like uphill long par four. Um and I was in the rough. And um, let me play the next bit here. What a beautiful game. What a cloud in the sky. Uh, get the right one. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, I that actually. So I hit um, a seven iron up that hill. And I knew I didn't want to land it short because you don't want to be long because it'd be chipping downhill. So mm -hmm. um, I hit a perfect seven iron pause like just just like that um like that bunker shot on the second hole i hit the same seven iron um and it was just straight as an arrow little tiny draw and and bounced right up on the green and to like maybe it was like 20 22 feet short i was like wow okay that's good nice. this, is, this is you know big and then it's here's me talking about what happened
Oh boy, oh boy, we got a little, a little update here. So, you know, I was talking about how great that seven iron was. I hit out of the rough about 20, 23 feet or something up the hill. Left it five feet short. I was thinking about how great my seven iron was and not about my two, just my lag butt. Nipped out the, uh, missed it. Nipped out the five footer. So, with three putt, that was a bogey. Next hole. Didn't do the pause. Okay, now short downhill. Actually, this is me talking about the next hole already. So mm -hmm. the 15, I didn't I didn't record on, but I hit a bad two iron to the right. Didn't really commit. I was kind of bummed out about that last hole. And then mm -hmm. hit a bad shot over the green and then like a big seven iron. And then I, I managed to save save bogey. I managed to, yeah, I said it was a bogey save. So that was like back to back bogeys. Oh, yeah. I was on a 400 yard downhill, part four. And um, kind of flared out a two iron, trying to play safe and didn't, but didn't do the pause. And uh, managed to save bogey, nice save actually. Missed the green and then missed the green again when I got up and down a little. Um, so I'm currently at seven over and three holes to go. But I had a beautiful two iron in the fairway here on 16. Par 72, so seven over is the number. So you got a par in. Got you got, a, got about maybe 90, 80 yards. Did a great tee shot. Kind of birdie or par, you know, par out. I do it. So I just focus on enjoying the moment and the pause. Not, not put any extra pressure on. So I did a pretty good job here. Just like keep talking about the pause. You know, like mm -hmm. every time, every time I did the pause, I hit a great shot. It was yep. just when I didn't commit to it. Cause you know, cause of the nerves, it, it's almost like a, you know, I don't want to say the word. It's like a why the why word, like in chipping or putting, it's kind of like in the driver. It's like, it's all mental, you know, and it's like, just your body isn't doing what your brain tells it to do for some psychological reason. Um, so, but anyways, it's, it's not, doesn't well, affect every shot, but anyways, I think, I think it's what happens when people get nervous on camera, they talk super fast, yeah. right? When people are nervous on the golf course, their tempo gets super, super quick, right? Or they're just tight, so they go slow and short in the backswing um, or fast and short. And that's why feeling that pause, it just it cancels that out and makes you level. So like, guess why having that feel works so well for you. So yeah, we'll keep absolutely. Going. But it's still many shots. It wasn't the pressure shortened it up right it's it's not yep. we don't have a foolproof mechanism to make it be pause every time and uh, which yep. cost me every 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 stroke you know almost except for like a couple of three putts every stroke was because of the um i didn't pause now right, here we go keep going oh so here you missed the green on a wedge shot i missed it from 105 oh. yards so this is where i gotta blame you you prick no so i'm like what do I do now? I t my A wedge goes 105 yards oh. before Brian. Now I don't know yeah. what my A wedge does. So I'm like, maybe I'll hit my sand wedge. <laughs> sand wedge got a little chunky. It would have been perfect, but I just got a little chunky. I'm not used to hit my sand wedge like that far. And I left, I was left with this. So I was like, oh man, I got a par out and I got this. But I was like feeling confident, right? Because I've got the toe down chip. You know, this is a make opportunity that. right here. This is a make opportunity. opportunity. I do this. That's what I was thinking. Dave Stockton taught this to me. So this is my buddy Timmy on the uh on the on, on the camera crew. Malcolm Scoble for Birdie. Ladies and gentlemen, can he make it? In a perfect almost went in. No oh, I thought you made it. Really proud of myself for that. Yep. Didn't keep beat myself up about leaving it short. And again, great example. Place to miss this is short. Gardner mm -hmm. back there had a three putt from back there. Because like, yeah, that looks the nasty. Hole. My A wedge, like if you're wet, you, I could hit my A wedge like 20 yards too far. Then you're back in that grass over here, you know. Anyways, we'll, we'll keep it going. Yep. Uh, I just want to pick on one of my buddies here. This is Tyler. I predicted, I sent, you know, it was like 12 guys playing in this event. And I was like, um, forecast is for uh, Sunshine for All and, uh, and Shanks for Tyler. And here I just <laughs> happened to film him. Just 
Oh, he shanked him. Shank. Then he gives a little wave. He knows it's on camera. He's like, I'm... So good. Sorry, Ted. Oh, that's right. funny. That was that was looking back on the whole I, 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 the 16. Okay. All right. All right, here we go. Um, just keep it going. Now we're on the par 317th. Great hole. I'm trying to keep my cool here. 17. Well, I made that. Show. Save that beautiful par with that little short par four. I kind of had 100 yards in and I was. That was big. So I hit, uh, save that little par, that little chip, which I've been working on. The toe down. Um, toe down method is so, so good. Just putt it. And uh, so stand up here on the 17th hole. It's just beautiful. And it's 170 yards, but, you know, quite a bit of wind, you know, blowing. I see the flags. And um, hit a seven iron, nice big pause. Guys I'm playing with reminded me, don't forget the pause, don't forget the pause. <laughs> and we had an ace watch. It almost went in. It went right next to the pen. I'll show you what it looks like. Thanks, Timmy Strickland. You were the inspiration for that. You told me to pause it. Takes yeah. friends, takes a village. Maybe the club, the club takes a village. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's huge. Look at this guy, soft hands. Friends Beautiful. 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 That's my partner. <laughs> All right, then I got we got the putt. This is uh, you know this is one of those putts that I've yeah. put a lot over the years, and you know these are not you know a lot of groups I play in. You know, oh yeah, that's good, that's good. No, I'm not like taking this as a gimme. This is a this is 500 bucks an outfit. I, mean, I know there's still one more hole, but this was a breaker, Brian. For the birdie. Oh. oh. In. That was big. That was big. Yeah. That's like the fist pump. I was nervous watching. All right. So here we are, my buddy Gardner. I just wanted to show one of his swings here. So on 18, you know, this is like if you look back at the history of like this course, is like a great YouTube clip of John Daly and Tiger Woods like teeing off here. Mm -hmm. um, this is Gardner, who usually who used to hit it further than me, and now I hit it further than him. I'll just show him this. Thing. Like a two handicap. Yeah, so good. I think Big high draw. Strong tracer going. We'll get that Solid. going in the future. Uh, oh, yeah. I can see it just passed the tree there. Tree. No. All right. Then we got. Malcolm Scoville. You know, I'm thinking here, like, you know, one one hole to go. One hole to go, big pause. Oh, shit. I hit in the lake. You can actually see the splash. Oh, gosh. Can you believe it? You can tell like that swing was shorter. It wasn't even close to the pause. I need yeah. a bogey here to shoot 79. Yeah. All right. I just hit the worst drive of the day. You could not make it up. And oh. the look, Brian, look how much room is right. I know. I know. Look I see how much there is. A freaking pasture for a hundred cows out there. All I have so, to do is bail out right and just hoof it up there mm -hmm. and bogey it. Where were you trying to where were you where was this ball trying to finish? I at the was first I was just I, I wasn't I you know what? Like I didn't really have a target. I didn't yeah. really you were really just thinking target. don't go left, weren't you? You know what? You're My sub get it on the land. probably like don't go left. I was thinking consciously, like, um, pause, you know, make sure you pause, work on the pause. And, you know, I wasn't, 
I wasn't like thinking, you know, look, just hit it out to the right. And like that is, I've had that swing for 10 years, a nice big bailout fade. And that is my, that has been my golf swing. Mm -hmm. All I needed to do was just revert back to that, you know, or hit a five iron down there. I mean, it's a mm -hmm. long, but a five iron, five iron, and then like, you know, a decent chip and a two putt. And I'm, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Like, this is like John Vandeveld type stuff at the British Open. <laughs> it's like all you need, you do not need to do anything with a freaking driver. Get the driver out of your hand. Like, just, play for a bogey yeah i think i mean i don't necessarily like the idea of playing scared but i think where you went wrong was you didn't pick a specific target you just kind of just or just wishy-washy let's just hit it out there the more important the tee shot i mean you should be looking okay the right corner of the chimney of that building mm -hmm. boom we're locking in on that because we know our brain's going to tell us, don't go left, don't go left. So you got to refocus on something else to distract yourself. So, yeah, I mean, so I'm still thinking, okay, like immediately, this is like all the work I've done with Imagine Golf and like studying all the great, yep. you know, legends. It's like, you know, you're on the free throw line, like to win the uh, like NCAA championship and like you're down by one and you got two free throws, you missed the first one, you're still focusing on the next one, right? So I'm like, yep. oh, okay, great. I need bogey. So, yep. you know, and my Matt Haskamp. <laughs> Like my buddies are behind me laughing. They're like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> and then um, uh, I was like, where do I retee it from? And Matt just pointed at the tee box. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, do I get a, no, I was like, can I get, is there a drop zone? He's like, you're standing in it. So I was like, oh, oh my God. All right. So here's my next one. So, so I, I, there was like something on my foot there, right? I'm like, so right away I should have stepped away. But anyways. All right, I hit a good drive. I hit yeah. a good drive. Ladies and gentlemen, just to the right of this tree. We'll get we'll get oh, perfect. Those we'll get the um, we'll get the uh the shot tracer going for everybody. But um, you know, I wasn't actually like beating myself up at this point. My internal dialogue was like, right, get up there and do it. And there's one thing I did here, you know, with my left foot. You can see right there. Yeah. So I really find it helps me to like get that weight, the feeling of the weight on the back of my left foot. You know, it's kind of like um, it when I get on my toes, I can kind of crowd the ball and mm -hmm. a lot of bad things happen. I need, so it just, that for me is like, I really made an effort to focus on that. And I kind of hit one of my old swings here. You can see how much the club face opens. Like it's, yeah. it's actually not, it's, yeah, but that's like, it's not that. It's, it's more that open. Short. It's a little bit shorter. It wasn't like that one you smoked off of three or four or no, whatever. They no. Yeah. But that's like, you know, you can see it there. I kind of go and like, it's going to the left chimney. Just like, but it, it was, yeah. a, it didn't crush it. It was a decent drive. All right. So now yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm alive. I'm alive. Let's keep going. You can still make, you can still make a bogey. A hundred percent. So then I hit, I had a seven iron, like again, like a seven iron, like 170, 80 yards. I didn't take a video of it, but I hit it just to the right of the green. And here I am. I got to make this for 79 and um you know <laughs> there's like you know you just see all the golf tournaments where it's like you know we got to make it whatever and i'm like i have made a lot of chips actually in the last couple of years i'm like this this is a makeable chip mm -hmm. and um before I'm, i i show this this hole the, the 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 paradox and the magic of this is crazy all right i started imagine golf about four years ago. And the inspiration was a round of golf I played with my buddy Fraser, who I went to St. Andrews with, and his 10-year-old son, Sam. And we, were, we played Harding Park. And on this hole, Sam, it was about the same pin placement. Sam, who's 10, had like a three and a half foot putt. And he said, uh, he, it was to tie the match. It was like actually very similar to tie. Like he needs, he needs this to go into tie. And he, um, and he looked... Um, he looked at, at his dad, he looked at me and he kind of like jumped up a little bit, like backed away from the ball. He's like, it's like three and a half foot button. He said, I know I'm going to miss. And like the dads kind of looked at each other like, man, just get the putt, you know, just knock it in, <laughs> knock it in. And Sam missed the putt, you know, yeah. thinking, I know I'm going to miss. And I, at that moment I was like, man, like, 
even at 10 years old, like our programming is we're going to screw up. And like mm-hmm. that, the, the genesis of Imagine Golf was like, we got to imagine that it's going to go in. We got to imagine we're going to make it. We got to imagine what's possible. Like it's, imagine the positive outcome, like focus on, on, on the gain, you know, as opposed to mm-hmm. like, yeah, you know, as, as mm-hmm. Daniel gave me this book recently. Um, yeah. So it is like, it, you couldn't, the irony of all this is just crazy. I mean, I just like, I was still kind of reflecting since this round of how like it's come full circle and how, you know, yeah. and the, anyway, so here I am, here's the chip. I'm seeing it go in. What's up? Looks good. Looks real good. Oh, just misses. And there I am thinking, and what there it is. I'm going to make me wear. Oh my gosh. You could what? not make it up. I That's was, all crazy. I needed was a bogey. <laughs> Look at me. Now, I got to. I gotta show like let me see what's next here in the thing. All right, here's the scorecard. Mm-hmm. So I'm on the top, 41 on the front. And look at that, like back nine. It's like um it is it was a solid back nine. I was three over and I had a three putt. That three putt, that one I hit that seven iron on that uphill. And I just the three putt and the drive on the last. I mean, it came down to driving the last, but like I had so many opportunities where like, I just, anyways, like all these things are starting to happen. And I, um, I'm just look at those two numbers right there, eight, zero. And I, I just like, oh my God, I can't, you know, we had, you know, Frank afterwards sitting on the beautiful patio and it was just such a, such a great day and so many great things happened, but, um, let me see what else we got here on this. Oh uh, yeah. So, well, give me the, I want you to give me my punishment in a second, but I just want to show you what I did on uh, driving out. All right. So this is me reflecting still fresh in my mind. I'm sitting here in my car, starting to sink in now. 80. Missed it by one shot. All I needed somebody. was a bogey on the last. And I parked my car next to the 18th tee shot that I'd hit into the water. Driving out. Ended up me having a six. And I'm going to put a ball in the ground and it on a tee in the ground. And I'm going to, I'm going to hit one. I'm going to hit another ball. I'm going to hold the pause for five seconds. I'm going to be the pause man of the people. I'm going to channel my inner alter ego of, the Michael Jordan of amateur golf. And um, I'm going to just pipe one. Soaring, huge drive over the trees. And this is a breakthrough. It seems like a failure, but it's a big, 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 big success. Michael Jordan once said, the only reason I succeed is because I fail. I didn't think that for a long time. I used to not like my failures. I love them. I embrace them. I'm grateful for today, for missing the shot, missing the, the shot at the end of the game, four hours of playing, and then, you know, one over on the back going into the 18th. So here we go. I'll, I'll film it. All right. So I'm like, all right. See, I saw three guys teeing off. There's a threesome. I'm like, I'm going to grab my clubs. <laughs> It's a little unorthodox, but I'm getting my um, getting my golf bag out next to the road. I'm gonna take out my drive. I'm gonna take out a tee and a ball. Now I'm gonna ask the guys on the hole. There's a threesome actually. If I can join them for one hole, just for the tee shot. Let's see what we can do. It's going. Nice guys. Trying to hold it here for a good three seconds. All right. Pause. 
Man of the people. Opt in the leg. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> totally tops one of the leg. I got a little bit too much uh, on the pause. look back. That is funny. Yeah, you looked away. So, all right. Here's. Now oh, that seems so appropriate. So we are all works in progress. And I'm thinking about Jordan that. Spieth's kind of meltdown at the Masters and Rory's meltdown and not meltdown, but kind of blowing it, right? You kind of got it in your hands and then you, you let it slip away. And it just feels, it feels really good to be competing with, you know, people who are kind of pulling for me. And, um, and you know, the great thing about pro football, pro basketball, pro golf, is that every you know, every season there's like, you know, 12 times or a hundred times or 30 times to just go back and do it again. And, uh, it's obviously only four majors, but every day, you know, every weekend for us amateur golfers is an opportunity to, you know, to, to have the lowest round every of our lives, call. you know, to, to every break 80, eight. to break par for the first time. So I'm excited to tee it up again. I'm, I'm, I will succeed in my effort to break par and, I will do it because I have failed. And I got that Michael Jordan commercial in my in my head. So grateful, grateful, grateful. Thank you. Uh, man, pause man of the people. And uh, that last one, uh, maybe it was a little too bold on the pause there. Um, and uh, topped one right into the lake again. So, um, all right. We got three weeks left to beat par. We're going to do it. All right. Thanks for... Uh, Thanks for being a special and supportive part of the journey. Thank you, everybody. Now I get to go for a great dinner with my buddies. So um, what a game. What a game this is. And uh, excited to be on the journey to getting better uh, and, and on and off the course with all of you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. That was – this experiment was perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. We wanted you to fail. We, we needed to figure out what the tendencies were. And now we have a couple more weeks to clean them up. And so what would you say, what were your biggest mistakes that you made that round? I think the amazing gain here is that we found the pause works. I'm hitting, and, and you know, I stuck to your work. Now, Brian, you're a tremendous coach. And, uh, you know, you, you stuck to the work of strengthening the grip, not easy, stuck to the work of like keeping that face square and, um, you know, not, not rolling my wrists open. Um, and then once I had that, I needed to bring that to the course. So, um, mm-hmm. playing with you, I didn't do that at all in Scottsdale. So I knew, all right, okay. First test fail. Everything's short and quick. The second test, um, better. Right, much better under more pressure. So harder course, half way harder shots, course. Half the shots and a really tough course. Half the shots, I, I really committed to the pause, and that's that's a lot more than the, you know, I'm, the trajectory is so good, right? From not mm-hmm. doing it at all, no transition, quick, short, all arms and shoulders to, um, you know, this is, this is like 50% of the time now I'm doing it. And that yeah. next time will be 75. And then it's all right, 95, 95% of the time you're doing, you're doing what you need to do on your swing. Exactly. And I mean, my goal was to make you more nervous than you'll be when you're trying to break par. And I think you might've been, <laughs> it was good because it held up it for the most part. Such an awesome challenge. And I'm so grateful to you because what do you, what do you like? You've done this with like ear piercings and like other stuff. I mean, I've, I've done it with having to shave my head before and i had to shave my head we can throw that photo up i'll send it over um but, you, but i've done it like, plenty of times you're a pro golfer and like you do this stuff and it's yeah, accessible to all of us as amateurs we don't have to be brian mogg in order to like you know take a challenge from our friend to like you know you know whatever it's like you these are these are things that all of us can use these are the principles of performance and you know improvement so it just here it is. Now I'm, you know, I'm doing what a pro golfer does to get better and it's making me better. So, so is it time to uh, reveal something? Oh my God. Or do we want to wait? All right. Or do we want to wait? Well, let me, I'm going to go to the next slide. 
first, yeah. let me pick out day six was Saturday, day five. Oh man, the work and learn strategy was day five. That was the day I played it. This was last week. I'm going to pick the winner right now, mm-hmm. $500. And, um, <clears throat> and then we'll reveal what I have to wear and what I'm up to. Let's go, rentals. baby. Oh boy. Um, <clears throat> well, um, um, all right, here we go. Well, I have to say so many great comments here and I'm just scrolling through them and, um, um, all right. I found it. This is just a random scroll. M M Cleese 55. This is you. 500 bucks. M M Cleese 55. If you can see that you said, love your content. My best score is an 80. I could certainly use $500, but I do hope you break it. Well, MM Cleese 55, you're the man or the woman. Um, we're going to send you, I'm going to ping you um, an email. If you don't hear from me, email malcolm at imaginegolf.com, M A L C O L M at imaginegolf.com, and I'll Venmo you 500 bucks. You're the, thank you for that. Thank you for that comment. And hopefully you, um, you know, if you can use the 500 bucks. I'm glad it's going to you, my friend. So we could all use 500 bucks. I have, I have 500 <laughs> less, but uh, anyways. <laughs> all right. But now the real reveal. The real, reveal. Uh, the what, real pain. So I'm Daniel, you got the photos? I do not know what Brian's got. I have no oh, idea. Oh, it's at the mix. I have no idea what he's got for me. And I will do this like, like at a public golf course. Not going to like do this, like, you know, playing like, you know, Augusta or something. So, it will be a filmed around. It's all like, golf. It's, a, it's golf attire. Oh it's just God. all right. Here we go. Cool. Here we go. This is totally genuine. I've not seen this. Oh, what the? Fr- oh my God! I can't break eighty. <laughs> that is so, dude. The pants. The pants are disco pants. The look. I I kind of like the pants actually. I I, I would, but that shirt. The eagle, uh, Dude, the that eagle. is so good. You're gonna I, roll to the course. Someone's gonna be like, "Why are you wearing that?" I mean, well, like, Amber Gaty. Oh so this is hilarious. That this is all right. This is, I think this is kind of probably from your closet, though. I mean, this is what you dress like. Like this is no. your style. I mean, it, no, this is, that used to be my college style. All right, I love, I love the color coordination with the hat and the shirt. So, what is the badass? Do I have to wear that hat? Well. Too? You get to choose. You get to choose your hat. So you want to walk around like a badass, or you want to walk around with the well, hat? This can't break eighty. I I love this. All the work we've done on alter egos, it's gonna have to be badass. I'm gonna wear the oh, badass okay. hat. I can't have anything near my house or my car or my golf bag that says "Can't Break 80. Um, <laughs> okay. so, but the the eagle, you know what? Like a lot of the stuff, like the metaphors and symbols, I might adopt that eagle as my like new you know symbol you know the eagle get my golf balls with an eagle on them and uh i like that eagle actually when i was um you know people used to ask like you know as a kid like oh if you were an animal what would you be and i was at this tony robbins conference once and like you know unleash the power within and it's all about like you know we're going to create you know some symbols for who you are i kind of got to create like a logo for yourself and i love the eagle this is again some crazy you know, just, you know, universe sprinkling some magic. And I, I like the Eagle because, you know, Eagle has a lot of perspective. Eagle flies high. He's a symbol of freedom, symbol of America. I'm very patriotic. So you, this is some magic in this, man. I love Let's it. Let's go. Let's I go. It. I can't wait to see you rocking it. I got to figure out what belt I'm going to wear with those pants though. So we got an Eagle, think- big Eagle shirt. If you're not watching it on YouTube, we got a big, beautiful, like golf shirt, like an Eagle you know, f- massive, like, you know, shoulder to shoulder eagle carrying a golf ball. How would you describe those pants, Brian? The pants are, they look gold plated disco pants. It's a Michael Jackson, like it is prime. They're, it's a Michael Jackson pants. So, you have to get your, your Michael Jackson dance on. I got some nice white shoes. I'll go with that. I mean, I'm not going to wear the white belt. That's the one thing I like, I just can't pull off the white belt, but like, I'll figure out a good belt. And then the badass hat, which, which color is going to, I mean, Maybe the Let's blue. go. I don't know. What do you think? I, mean, I think the. I mean, I don't know. Blue's blue. Color. I don't know. If blue's gonna. 
I don't know. We'll figure out that. We'll figure I think you go that. blue. Badass blue. Um, but wow. All right. Well, I thought you were gonna put me in a chicken outfit, like full. No. <laughs> so this that is was the best part. Better. You didn't know what the outfit was, so you're gonna be a, a little bit more afraid. But oh. I figured you'd get kicked out in a chicken outfit. This is awesome. You get kicked out of the course. Uh, so at least you'll be rocking we'll something. This. We will film. But people course. will be looking at you. Oh, Who God. is that guy? Well, this is, is just like normal enough that people think that guy is that guy for real is what he normally wears. Yes. So it's like that actually makes it more of a jerk move. It's like it's it like, makes it worse. It makes it worse. It's almost <laughs> it's like almost serious, but not quite a joke. So people aren't really sure. They're like, this guy's just kind of weird. Got some like next level <laughs> punishment. All right. All right. So the other thing is, is that I've had so much fun doing this. Like, and I know, you know, you're big, you know, you're you're going pro, right? What was the yeah. just let's recap your big um four year goal? 30, what I, 35th? 38th? Yeah, so my my big four year goal. What'd you say? 32. Thir- what number on tour are you in four years? Thir- 39th in the world. 39th in the world. Four years from now, 39th you're the, in the world. You're the you're the, you're the what the Conor McGregor golf? of golf. Just okay. walking around. I'm gonna get you some sponsors new, uh, deals all over. I gotta get you yep. some new outfits if you're gonna be the Conor McGregor of golf. I might just need to wear this outfit. Dude, this is Connor. Actually, Connor's got Connor's got style. Got I bet style. you Connor would wear those pants. He would wear I those. Wear, I don't think so. He's he, he mates, mates, no fucking <laughs> man, mate. He's like, yeah, I got a, I got a reputation. But no, you got. Um, well, I'm. Uh, you got. You got. If you, you got to get as good as you give, so I gotta be. I got. I get a challenge now. I get a bro. Oh, you're challenge. gonna give me a challenge? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have to stand and deliver. So we're gonna get it filmed, and yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So all right. That's that's something for the next pod. But um, all right, we got this has been, this has been a long one. Um, but I'm like, you know, I think this 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 new podcast format we're doing, it's I think it's okay that it's long. You know, people can fast forward, they can listen at two x speed, they can do whatever they want. So um, it's it's up to you, right? I listen to podcasts like in chunks, like you know. Put it on for a 15 minute time or fall asleep and then next night was another 15 minutes so mm-hmm. um you know there's a lot of seinfeld you know there's a lot of there's a lot of content there but you can just pace it out however you like so hopefully everybody enjoyed this um how do we wrap this up here i think i i really want to get my little mental game jam yeah, yeah. yeah i really want to yeah let's let's hear brian's mental game tip of the week so my my quick little gem is practice trying not to try we all spend so much time you start over because i got you on full screen yeah. now this will be good for the instagram yes yeah. that's so a my... log, pro golfer tip of the mental game tip of the week mental game tip of the week is practice trying not to try we all spend so much time at the range trying and trying and trying to do things and so much effort but what we don't ever practice is hitting balls with no effort and just turning your brain off and hitting. And when you go to the putting green, just flow and don't try so hard. Practice not trying, if that makes sense. And it'll free you up a ton because that's the best way to play good golf. When we try too hard, bad things happen. So you got to practice trying not to try. That makes sense. That makes sense. So what there's a, this idea of a do this, don't do that. It's like, you know, eat vegetables, don't eat Skittles. So try not to try. So you are, what you're not doing is trying. So you're it's like avoiding trying. That's good. But you're replacing it with like, a, what's the word? It's, it's like practice going to the range and doing things without necessarily thinking, reacting. So it's not as much effort. You're not forcing things. We need to be able to just flow. Does that make sense? Do I need to explain this it, again? It, it makes it makes total sense to me now after a lot of work. <laughs> I only am recently, my swing is only at a place where I can feel like I can do that. Yes. Um, but it's even if you are a, a high handicap, you know, on, on the beginning of your journey, your 28 handicap, what this would look like, maybe stand up and show an example of like a half swing that somebody, anybody could do. 
what does the swing look like where you're not trying? Just give us like a, you know, an example. Without yeah, a- I think I think a perfect example would be you set up three golf balls, okay? One, two, three in a row, and you just look at the target, hit it. And then you walk up to the next one, look at the target, hit it. Look at the target, hit it. You're just flowing and moving. You're not thinking as can, what about can i think about my grip my left hand no but what Can't about my what about how much pressure is on my right foot nothing what about whether the guy behind me in the stall is like checking out my um you know my weird golf outfit no what about it's what like, i have to cook for dinner tonight no can't think what about Just what about that guy at work you know who stole my last client in commission no you're just looking at the target and you're going Look at the target and go. Just look at the target and go. Okay. Okay. You're practicing flowing. Love it. It's it's the it's a beautifully it's a meditative thing you're talking about there. It's like just just breathe. What Mm -hmm. do you mean just breathe? Don't think about dinner. Don't think about stress. Don't think about you know the fight you had. Don't think about the money and problems you have. Don't think about you know not forever, but just just for like a swing. For three minutes, right? Three minutes of practice, just hitting and not worrying about where the golf ball goes. You're just, you're just hitting. No effort, no trying. Sound like Mr. Miyagi, or like Mr. Uh, Miyagi. Yoda, the Yoda. Yeah, Mike, that's what I'm gonna dress you up as, Yoda. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, uh, all right, all right. We got, we got to be this. The, we got some logistics quickly on the uh, as we leave here. So we got it's week five. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to Hawaii on Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. So we'll, this, this will be released on Thursday. So next week I am, we'll have to figure out filming the pod. I think we have to record on Monday if we can. So for next week, so, yeah. um, but I'm going to be playing, I'm bringing my golf clubs. So I'm going to get some rounds in Hawaii. So it might be that I break part in Hawaii. I'm going to try to find something down there to help video. Um, and then I'm back up for a, a week and that's, so next week will be week seven. That's the Hawaii week for me. And the week after I'm back. Um, I will be going to San Diego to play around a golf with my uncle, um, for one day, but I also will have, I think that like maybe that Thursday, Friday of, um, week seven, I need to book in two rounds at like public course near me is, um, crystal Springs. Okay. Um, I think it's a good track to do, to, if I haven't done it yet, um, in Hawaii and I haven't done it with my uncle in San Diego, then I, I do it, um, in, um, um, I try, you know, but those are the, those are like, you know, we got two times to do it and I'll actually, I'll be able to wear the outfit. Maybe I can do it in the outfit. Perfect. So, um, um, also anybody in San Diego, member of, um, La Jolla, um, country club, let me know. It's right near where my uncle's staying. Um, uh, next week, not, not this coming week, but a week after I'd love to play with you. So, all right. Homework this week. Yeah, I got. So, I'm here in town, like from like here until Tuesday. So I got a full week, and I I, I will play at least one full round. Um, okay. what's you know what what am I doing, Coach? All you're like, gonna like, do Q school like for you like Q school is now three yeah. weeks out, not even three weeks out. Yeah, so I think from what I saw from the last round, you got to continue to work on the pause, make that a little bit better. Just make that a little bit better. That's like. That's going to be your main thought on the golf course. When you go play, you're going to continue to work on picking good targets, committing to the pause. Now practice, keep hitting into the net, work on the pause, work on the takeaway, no sushi roll on the backswing. Um, and then other than that, now it's just time to play as much as you can play. Okay. I'm on short game. We got to get those wedges dialed in. So you know your distances, but we're now it's time to transition to playing. So just do your work into the net when you can. And then play as much as possible. All right. I'm still doing my, you know, just very boring, you know, this is like Steph Curry, Michael Jordan shooting their free throws and three pointers, like 50, 50 in the net, holding the pause, yep. sending you the video, mm-hmm. say a video this morning. You said great progress, you know? Um, so <clears throat> now, now it's, now I got to get reps in at the range. So I got to, um, yeah, I think it's got to be at least, at least six, five to six rounds in this week, next week, and the week after. Uh, yes. So I've got six attempts at it. 
Yep. And I think each round I play, I'll just, I'll be doing a similar thing as I did at Harding. I'll like put my camera on and film some stuff. And, um, and, uh, the ones on in week seven where I'm wearing the outfit on one of them, I will actually get a videographer and we'll like get the shot tracers and everything like that. Perfect. Um, Perfect. Love it, man. Anything else? No, nothing else. We've got the system. This is your system. You know what to do now. Keep yep. grinding on that, grind on the range, play. Just try to do a little bit better than what you did at Harding. The pause and how you think. That's it. Love it. All right. Everybody that, that wished me luck and gave me some tips and advice um, in the Imagine Golf app, uh, thank you. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Um, it's getting a lot of positive feedback. So, Brian, I think... You know, and Daniel, just thank you both. And, you know, I think we're all like a good team here, like making it 10 to 15% better every week. If you guys, mm-hmm. if anybody's listening has specific feedback on it, let us know. If anybody here is like a golf writer or, you know, you have a blog or Twitter or Instagram, you just give a shout out to the Imagine What's Possible show. Like, Brian, what's your Instagram? And at just at Brian Mogg, at B R I A N M O G G. Yeah. And Brian, is a, are you still available for coaching or not? Yeah, yeah. Reach out for for lessons. Follow my stuff on Instagram. I give out a bunch of golf swing advice. Follow Brian Mog. Like I get, you know, people ping me and say, "Hey, can I get Coach by Brian?" I'm like, "Yep, just DM on Instagram. Uh, he's a machine, and um, you know, just send your videos to him, and then he sends it back." Um, the um, follow at Imagine Golfers at Imagine Golfers, and uh, on YouTube, just search like at Imagine Golf and. If you're a double digit handicapper, we just started a new Facebook group. It's called Imagine Golf, lower scores and more wins for double digit handicappers. So join that. Um, any other admin things like follow, like, you know, do the thing where like, you know, you're actually like following our pot, you know, whatever podcast play you listen to, um, subscribe to it and please subscribe to us on YouTube. So yep. oh, we don't know. We're figuring this out. But keep imagining what's possible. Brian, thank you for the challenge. Thank you for the outrageous outfit. You are the Conor McGregor of golf. <laughs> of course. It was fun. Out of box. All right. Thanks, everybody. Cool. Man. Oh. That was, I don't know, as long as hell. But that, was a, that was a long one. <laughs> Dude.